aspen habitats are probably the most biologically diverse habitat in North America. They're considered to be oases or hotspots of biodiversity. And when you walk through an aspen stand, it's music to your ears. It supports more species per area than any other habitat we have. We've got to treat these stands now for restoration. The objective is restoration. But the current aspen stands we know of are at a risk of being lost. There's been about 140 years of grazing. There's been about 100 years of fire suppression and 80, 90 years of timber harvest. And so the existing problem now is of the stands that we know are present, the ones we can find and see on the landscape, are in a degraded condition. The most common risk factor on our district has been conifer encroachment. Aspen are extremely shade intolerant, so as they get overtopped by conifers, they tend to be outcompeted and become ill or diseased and will die off. And I'm actually worried that our restoration efforts won't happen quick enough for some of these stands, that we, we might lose them before we ever get it done on the ground. Some of our stands are in that bad of shape, where you have just one standing aspen left. A number of the aspen stands on the district have declined to the point where they're, the only thing that's left is just a handful of sprouts. Uh, this is an example of one of them. Basically, this is the last remaining living aspen in this area right now. And once they're gone, once they're dead like this, there's no proven means of restoring them to this site. We have conducted a district-wide inventory of aspen across this 330,000 acre district. It's been about eight years in the making and we have GPSed or mapped every aspen stand. We think we have a pretty complete inventory that so far totals about 700 stands and about 3,700 acres of aspen. Of our 700 stands, about 75% are at a higher, highest risk of being lost. About 4% are healthy and 6% have been totally dead. So we've actually found more dead stands than healthy stands. Aspen's a fascinating tree. Basically, this system is set up for disturbance. There's a root system under the ground and when there's enough hormones in the root to promote suckering, which is pr producing new stems off the roots, then out comes a new sucker. Uh, it breaks out of the ground and starts growing as its own independent stem. Maybe it's sharing for a long time, sharing the same root system as the parent tree. And we know they only have a life expectancy on the average of about 60 to 120 years. The actual clone, the presence of that genetic identity could be some people up to think up to thousands of years old. Aspen are primarily a clonal species and that the primary means of regeneration is through sprouting from a common root system. Seeding events are exceedingly rare. A successful seeding event may be on the order of hundreds or thousands of years. But once an aspen stand dies, there's no proven means of restoring aspen to that area. And so the existing amount of aspen we have on the landscape is basically all we're going to have. So our approach is to remove conifers within and adjacent to the aspen stand. And we typically will remove conifers from about 150 feet on the south, east, and west sides of the stand and 100 feet to the north to maximize sun exposure. The purchaser, whoever buys the material, they have to remove the small logs and the biomass in the same operation. So what happens is we have one entry into the stand, so soil compaction is limited so that we don't have damage to the stand. What we're looking at here is a landing where they're bringing in saw logs today and biomass. And he takes it over and they're piling it on that back pile that you're looking at. That's the biomass, the small trees that will be chipped up and taken to the wood-fired power plants. Well, the Lassen National Forest is very fortunate because it has the infrastructure around it and the location of that biomass plant to the material coming out of the woods is critical. We need to be within about 50 miles of a biomass plant because it costs so much to haul the material. We're very unique here in northeastern California that we have an infrastructure of five small log mills, and more importantly, we have standalone wood-fired power plants that use chips to produce the power. One load of biomass removed from the National Forest will supply enough power for approximately an hour to 10,000 homes. So we're helping to improve the forest health, and we're also producing green power. So it's a win-win situation for us. Aspen management really isn't about a tree. It's about a habitat. We really have to think about how we manage across all the forest, all these different habitat types, and aspen being one of the most important ones. We know we've lost most of it. We live in a conifer sea up here. 
uh, and so these unique habitats are really disproportionately important to wildlife and they're such a small part of our landscape. Uh, that's really where we want to pinpoint our conservation efforts. All the grasses and seeds and all the herbaceous material produced provides feed for hundreds of bugs and insects. It's like a big lunch counter. It's probably the most diverse habitat in the Sierra Nevada for birds. So from a conservation organization's perspective, it's really our, one of our top priorities in the Sierra Nevada is, is aspen restoration. It's really the aspen community that we're trying to restore, not just aspen as a single species, but it's the aspen, and plus it's all the other plants that come in with the aspen stand. It's the grasses, the forbs, and shrubs that make up that community. And it's really those associated plants uh, that host the plant species that provide the ecological value in an aspen community. What you really look at is how that system functions more than just a meadow or just some aspect for wildlife or timber or something else. To me, it's looking at the whole system. We've treated about 20% of their stands so far. Every stand that we have done this treatment to has responded. Within even one or two years after these treatments, which are just really removing the conifers, just doing that alone, we're seeing a spike in bird diversity. We do get a very, fairly quick response. Within three or four or five years, you can go back to a site and see six, eight foot aspen sprouts, plus all the other plant species that come in with it. I've been able to see change on landscape, and it, there's nothing more rewarding than walking into a stand where you couldn't see two feet in front of you and all of a sudden there's a view of aspen and a meadow with these old growth pine trees. I could retire tomorrow feeling like I've accomplished something in my career just knowing that I was a part of seeing aspen restoration on the district. This aspen stand will dominate the site for 60 to 80 to 100 years. So this is going to be a successful treatment and like you said David this stand will be here for a long time to come. And what better legacy to leave behind than a healthy aspen component across this landscape.